So yeah, is it time to worry about Igor Shosturkin? You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 986 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And we are, of course... Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So let me just preface this entire episode. And of course, the Rangers, for anybody that may have missed it, maybe you didn't stay up late. If, if you didn't stay up late, you didn't really miss a whole lot or nothing good anyway, or not much good. Um, the bottom line, the Rangers went into Vegas last night, lost 5-1. to one. I'm going to preface this entire episode by letting everybody know this is probably going to be like as much as I go in on the Rangers, you know, so far this season. It's probably about as disappointing and disheartening and just bad of a loss as they've had, I would say, the entire season. And you might think like, well, you know, they're playing the Knights. It's on the road. Tough place to play. Defending Stanley Cup champions. But as Steve Valaket tweeted out, and I realized that the Knights were playing shorthanding, you know, they had some injuries. Apparently, they had seven players injured. Didn't matter. Uh, they still overwhelmed the Rangers. And so aside from the first 10 minutes of this game, basically just a complete disaster. And we had to start by talking a little bit about Igor Shosturkin because Igor has been more of a topic on the podcast this season than he typically is. You know, usually as good as he is, that's sort of the reason why I don't talk about him that much. Because, you know, Igor's just back there doing Igor things, making all these great saves, playing excellent hockey. And usually there are bigger concerns that the Rangers are facing. But now, guys, we are past the halfway point of the season here. And we've gotten to the point where I feel, and I don't know, maybe you guys share this feeling with me. Maybe some of you still feel really good about Igor. But I'm getting to the point where I don't really know which Igor Shosturkin is going to show up on any given night. It feels like uh, like a game of roulette, and I'm not even doing a Vegas thing there. Believe me, I'm not clever enough for that. But it just feels like it's a spin of the roulette wheel as far as, you know, how Igor is going to play in this game or in that game. And just look at, like, the stretches that he's had recently. So we thought he was back on track, or at least I did, uh, when he had that five-game stretch, won all five games, the Rangers went 5-0 and oh during that stretch. In that stretch, Igor allowed only eight goals total, and he beat some pretty good teams during that stretch as well and held some really good teams to, you know, one goal or maybe two goals in some instances. Uh, but the bottom line, he's playing very well then. Uh, he then, three out of four games, the, the four games that followed, he allows four goals or more in three of them. And, you know, obviously a shaky stretch there. Then he gets good games against the Caps and the Kraken, only allowed three goals on 56 shots. Rangers won both of those games. And then you get this clunker, and that's just kind of a microcosm of the entire season. Yes, he was injured a little bit earlier in the year, but that's over and done with. He's been back from the injury for a long time now. I do think it's time that Igor Shosturkin picks it up and uh, starts being, you know, one of the Rangers' best players because that's what we all believe him to be. And I'm actually going to elaborate on that concept in just a little bit here. But I want to kind of... And to illustrate my point of how it's just a struggle right now, look at how this game unfolded in the first period. Rangers came out, they they played great. They're they're you know just skating very well, creating all kinds of scoring opportunities, not getting rewarded for it. Why weren't they getting rewarded? Well, that's because Logan Thompson was on the other side of the rink, uh, basically standing on his head, making all these awesome saves. He had a sequence back to back saves against Lafreniere and Trocheck, where basically a miracle that he kept the puck out, but he did a great job there. Rangers kept pressing, you know, they spending the whole first 10 minutes on Vegas' side of the ice, uh, getting the puck at the net, good stuff all around. You love this start for the Rangers. If you told me at this point they were going to lose this game 5-1, to one, I would have thought you were insane. That's, of course, what happened. But then, you know, it goes back the other way, and as soon as the Knights get two decent scoring chances, and I'm not talking grade A, incredible scoring chances, I'm talking decent scoring chances, they score on both of them, and they're up 2 nothing. And it felt like it kind of deflated the Rangers. I'm not excusing any of the other Rangers skaters for, you know, deflating, um, you know, once the score went down 2 to nothing, or even one nothing. Even at that point, it kind of felt like it took the air out of the Rangers' sails a little bit. And they have to be better than that. They have to be more resilient than that. And Thompson's a good goalie. You take nothing away there. But we're talking about a guy that's a backup goalie to Aiden Hill. And I'm just not used to this situation, and you can 
use the whole Igor era. You can use the Henrik Lundqvist era as well. I'm not used to a situation where it seems like the other team has an edge in terms of goalie play. And it's happening more this season than I can ever remember it happening. And you keep telling yourself that, you know, it's a bad stretch that he's going through. And I do think, you know, you look at Igor's track record, he'll eventually straighten this out and play better. But again, we are more than halfway done with this season, halfway through the regular season. I believe that was like their 42nd game last night. I know we're past the halfway point uh, either way, maybe the 43rd game. Um, But here are Igor's stats and where he ranks in terms of other goalies that have played in at least 20 games this season. I wanted to you know, make sure we weren't allowing guys in that have played like five games and did pretty well. No, these are guys that have all played. Uh, we're going to compare Igor's numbers to theirs in some key stats here. So we'll start with uh, one of the big ones, goals against average. Igor Shosturkin right now after that game, 2.84. That is 17th in the league. Uh, he trails goalies in that stat, such as Carter Hart, uh, Uko Pekka Lukonen, and Connor Ingram. I did not think... <laughs> Igor Shesterkin, more than halfway through the season, will be behind those three goalies in such a key stat. You also look at another big one, save percentage, 902. Igor is barely above the 900 save percentage at this point. It feels like it's kind of been dropping recently as far as his ranking there, but he's 23rd in the league in that stat. And again, this is all goalies that have appeared in 20 games or more. He's 23rd. He trails goalies such as Jordan Binnington, Elvis Merzlinkins, Peter Morazic, and Sam Montebo, among many, many others. And again, you just don't expect Igor Shesterkin more than halfway through a season to be behind goalies like that in such a key area. Uh, there's one other stat, and this one doesn't get talked about all that much, but I'm on hockey reference, and this is one that I had to look at. Uh, goals saved above average. This is goals that the goalie prevents given his save percentage and shots faced versus the league average save percentage on the same number of, of shots. So it's, it's a little bit of a mouthful there, obviously, but... Bottom line, you cannot help but notice the discrepancy here. Uh, Last year, Igor in this stat was uh, 20.6. His Vesna season was 44.9. This year in that stat, he is a negative 1.1. So he's actually, I mean, I guess that's a way of saying that he's uh, now below average in such a stat that like other goalies are making uh, better saves and more consistent saves than he is. Again, that's a stat I got to dive into a little bit deeper. But when you see that amount of a difference, um, it really does jump off the chart. And, you know, you can look at any of these stats, any other stats, or just go with the eye test. And it's pretty obvious at this point, Igor Shosturkin is having just a very average season. And I'm not saying even average, like by his own lofty standards, because, you know, when he won the Vezna and had those video game numbers, I even said during that season, I'll never like completely hold him to these kinds of numbers every single season. But you expect better than what you're getting this season. When I say that he's been average this year, not average by his own lofty standards, average by... Look at the other goalies in this league. He's just been an average goalie. You know, that's all he's been so far this season. And there's times, look, there's times where Igor's been great. There's times where uh, he's shown those flashes of being that Vesna uh, winning kind of a goalie. Um, There's times where, you know, he's he's made some big time saves in some clutch spots. There's times where, you know, there's a, a game here and there where maybe he stole it. There's been games where he's been the best player on the ice for the New York Rangers. But then there's also games where, He's one of the biggest reasons why they lose. And that was definitely the case in this game right here. Um, Just didn't have it. Just just was not up to making uh, any of these saves that the Rangers needed him to make. And something that really kind of illustrates my point here, and I've got this stat in my phone, so let me see if I can just find it real quick here. So Steve Valakat, he does the whole clear sight analytics thing and you know, kind of looks at high danger scoring chances and medium and low and all that good stuff. So um, bottom line, last night, and and not that this is like an, an infallible, perfect, you know, formula that he uses, but I do think for the most part, He gets it right, and it does kind of tell the tale of what happened in the game. So in that game last night, per Valakets, you know, metrics or whatever you want to call it, uh, the Rangers were expected to get 3.53 goals. The Knights were expected to get 3.45 goals. So even in a game where it looked like the Rangers basically um, had had their opponents skating circles around them, and they just didn't have it after the first 10 minutes, even in a game such as that, they still were expected to score more goals in this game than the Knights were. And they didn't. And a big part of that was the goaltending discrepancy. Thompson was great. Igor really struggled. And by the way, th- those stats, they don't count the empty netter. So so that's not part of the equation here for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and there will be people, and I've said it on here too, um, but there will be Ranger fans that say, well, you know, Igor, he, he's not getting the help that he needs. The, the Rangers hang him out to dry. And there have been games where Igor kind of gets lit up. And that is absolutely true. There's been times where the Rangers defense just hasn't been good enough. You can clearly make that argument. Uh, I don't disagree with it, you know, for, for games here and there, but this is Igor Shesterkin. You know, he's supposed to be the goalie, the caliber of goalie that can overcome things like that. He can overcome uh, the Rangers giving up 
too many odd man rushes. He can overcome a couple too many, uh, you know, high danger scoring opportunities. He can overcome uh, maybe the Rangers not clearing somebody out of the crease and make that point blank safe. And he's just not doing that right now. And I don't expect him to make every single one of those saves, but he's not really making any of them. You don't see too many uh, spectacular saves from Igor Shesterkin over the last handful of games here. And if we're not going to blame Igor, you know, I, I see people that they want to blame this guy and they want to blame that guy. And, you know, people are going after Keandre Miller and Braden Schneider seems to be a target for Ranger Twitter this year. So who, who's more to blame here? Let's really think about this. Who, who, who does this really fall on? Should this fall on the defenseman who's 22 years old, has not yet played two complete calendar years of hockey? Should it fall on him? And, and the guy that, by the way, is your fifth defenseman at best. Should it fall on somebody like that? Or should it fall on the guy that we all think is one of the best goalies in hockey? The guy that just two years ago won the Vesna in a landslide, got MVP votes, was a finalist for the Hart Trophy. So I think the answer there is pretty obvious. And again, I can't put it all on Igor, but a lot of it is on Igor. You just expect him to be better than this. You expect him to be able to steal a win every now and again. And lately, it, it just isn't happening. So it has to be better. And the, the good news here. It's not just Igor's Vesna season because there, there's people that just kind of hate on the Rangers that say, oh, yeah, one year wonder, that was a fluke, blah, blah, blah. Look, that was his best season, clearly, far and away. Every other season that he's had in the NHL, he's had a really strong season. And, and you know, the kind of numbers that you would expect from Igor Sisterkin. Uh, This year, though, that hasn't been the case. But the bottom line, the reason I bring that up, every season he's had in the NHL before this one has been a really strong to absolutely phenomenal season. So the track record is there. We're talking, you know, parts of four different seasons. Um, so that's what gives me hope and, and faith and confidence that he will eventually turn around and be the Igor Shesterkin that we all know and love. But it hasn't really been there so far this season. Again, there, there's flashes, but is he the the consistent dominant goalie that we've seen in the past? No, not 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 for the first half of the season, at least. Uh, he clearly has not been. So fingers crossed that he gets it together. Um, you know, I see people saying, oh, he needs to see a sports psychologist and, and then th this and that and the earth. Look, that's not my area of expertise. I don't know what Igor needs to do mentally to prepare for these games or, you know, play well once the games start. I'm not really sure there. One other trend that I want to point out, though, too, and I think Steve Valak had touched on this, it feels like you kind of know how it's going to go for Igor based on how the first period goes. Like, I'd like to see a game, you could even use this game as an example last night, a game where maybe Igor doesn't get off to the best start and he lets in two goals in the first period, and, ah, oh, man, I should have had those, but then he slams the door after that, and the Rangers come storming back, and they win the game. You're not really seeing that either. It feels like how he starts the game is typically how he's going to finish it. If he gives up a, a goal or two early, if they're soft, or maybe even if not, it, it just feels like it's going to snowball on him. And, um, you know, it, it's not easy to just slam the door. Much easier said than done. But again, we are talking about Igor Shesterkin, a guy that we fancy as one of the best goalies in the league. And for his whole career, he has been. This season, notwithstanding. he Again, it's just been a, it's been an average season for Igor Shesterkin. There's times where he's been great. But he needs to, you know, find it more consistently than he's been able to find it uh, thus far this season. So, yeah, that's what I had to say about Igor Shesterkin. I mean, I think we get to a point here again, past the halfway point. It's got to be said sooner or later, and uh, we we just did that. So we're gonna continue talking about this. I mean, he wasn't the only one to blame in this game, that is for sure. Um, we're gonna talk about you know, just a bizarre first period where the Rangers came storming out of the starting blocks and then completely fell apart. We're gonna get to that uh, in just a second here. First, though. We definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over uh, 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to the other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. 
And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is also brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season has concluded and the playoffs are underway, but there is still plenty of time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and much, much more. Obviously, we've got a slate of uh, NFL football games, playoff games on tap for this weekend, uh, four to be exact. One of the best weekends of the year uh, for football. So, you know, just an idea to check out those games. But uh, once again, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, we also want to let everybody know that Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. I want to go ahead and talk about uh, weird first period here for the Rangers. We had a weird first period in Seattle, uh, or against Seattle, rather, the, the most recent game that the Rangers played. I thought the Rangers in that game against the Kraken played very poorly in the second period, but somehow got away with it and won the period two to nothing. That was bizarre. This was equally as strange because, as I mentioned in the intro, if you told me, based on the first 10 minutes of this game, the Rangers were going to lose this game by four goals, I, I just... What are you watching? Like, like what, what is happening here that you believe that that's going to be the case? There, there was nothing to suggest that that was going to happen. Uh, the Rangers got to a, a phenomenal start in this game, the kind of start that you want on the road against the defending champs who are shorthanded again, mind you. Um, long offensive zone shift for uh, the Panarin line. Fox and Lingren were out there too. Um, you know, a couple of good scoring chances all around, just dominating possession. Knights were really back on their heels. Even when the Knights cleared the puck, the Rangers got it right back in, went right back to work. Um, then not too long after this, you had Lindgren passing to Kako in front for a redirection. A point-blank stop was made by Thompson. That goes back to what I was talking about, where Thompson really kept the Knights in this game uh, early in the first period. And then uh, playoff of the faceoff, you have the Rangers winning a faceoff. Lafreniere takes immediate possession of it and almost tucks it home. Thompson's kind of sprawling. He's down on the ice. He keeps it out. Uh, Trojic gets there. He tries to stuff at home, and that is stopped too. Probably other than the Ranger goal, their best scoring opportunity of the night. And um, Thompson just wouldn't let it get by him. Then you have Trocek and Lafreniere kind of uh, combining the force of turnover in the offensive zone. Puck goes to Gustafson, and he gets tripped. So the Rangers go to the power play. Um, so good stuff there. You know, good hard work by all three of those players. And then on the power play, uh, Mika receives a pass from Panarin from the other side of the rink. He takes a one-time. It wasn't really a one-timer. It's more of a wrist shot on this one. Bottom line, he put the puck right at the net very quickly. Uh, denied on a sliding save by Thompson. And then Wheeler and Kako almost linked up for a goal at the tail end of this power play. Uh, Wheeler with a strong drive to the net. Tried to slide it over to Kako, which he did. I think Kako's got to bury this one. You know, he had some of the net open and unfortunately put it off the side of the net instead and um, just was not able to finish there. Um, but then after that, everything went bad. Everything went downhill. Everything just sucked after that point. Um, so I don't know where, and this goes back to what I was talking about with Igor, the first really quality chance that the Knights get, they end up scoring. And it wasn't even like a high danger, high quality uh, scoring chance, at least in my very humble opinion, wasn't the softest goal you'll ever see either. But I think it's one that Igor's got to come up with. Uh, the Knights go in, it's kind of a slow moving three on two break. And Jonathan marches. So scores Vegas is up one to nothing. Uh, the puck was in the neutral zone, and Lafreniere and Panarin both kind of overskated it. I think they were both going for the steal and missed it, and neither one of them got back on the back check as fast as I think you would like them to do. And again, Igor unable to make what I thought was probably the first, you know, kind of tough save of the night. Looks like it went under his right arm. Uh, this is about 11 minutes into the first period here, and Igor just looked like he wasn't ready. And that's another thing that's been going on with Igor lately. There's too many goals where he just looks a little bit flat-footed, not really ready for the shot. He was kind of sitting back in his crease. And, you know, I'm no I'm no Benoit Lair. I'm no goalie expert. But to me, just making sure you're ready and you're locked in and you're focused, that to me seems like it should be a pretty simple fix, a uh, pretty quick fix from Igor Sturkin and Benoit Lair, and maybe even get Jonathan Quick involved in that too. I mean, he's the veteran in the room and the three-time Stanley Cup champion and everything, but for one reason or another, that looks like a recurring problem uh, for Igor Sturkin at times this season. 
And again, did he get a ton of help on this play? No, I, I already mentioned that Panarin Lafreniere didn't exactly bust it to get back in the defensive zone. Uh, Keandre Miller on this play, he was kind of just reaching for the puck. He didn't look good here either. Just guys not really looking all that engaged. You know, I, I don't know what's going on or why this happened, but this goal basically derailed the Rangers' entire night, which was very disheartening to see. Um, then, you know, a little bit later in the first period, about 5-12 to go here. Another goal that kind of came from out of nowhere that you just don't really expect to go in. Uh, Waugh got to the outside of Jacob Truba, just kind of went around him up the right side. And then he passes across the crease to Barbashev, goes off of his skate and into the net. I didn't think this was a distinct kicking motion. And frankly, the way this game went, I don't even care. They wouldn't have, the Rangers wouldn't have won anyway. <laughs> like, like even if this one got overruled, but this made it two nothing. And Igor just kind of on this one, I thought kind of got caught in between. It looked like he wanted to kind of poke check the puck. You know, during the pass, there was a pass across the crease in front of him and he went to do it and then he kind of stopped and that kind of took him out of position. So he kind of just got caught in between here. I think once you go to make that move to knock the puck away, you, you got to keep going with it. Um, again, very easy for me to say sitting here in my you know computer chair and in the comfort of my own home. Um, but again, you know, I, I think once you start to make that move, you got to go for it. You know, you could poke it away and it could go right to another night and maybe he shoots and scores. But, I mean, at least you made a play on it. At least you did something. Here, again, he just kind of got caught in between. And Puck goes off the guy's skate and just kind of flutters over Ewer's right arm, goes into the net. And just like that, it's 2 nothing. And to me, I mean, he's got to save at least one of these, if, if not both of them, th these two goals here that, that made it 2 to nothing uh, in favor of the Knights in the first period. And one more thing I want to say about the first period here. And let me preface this part of the episode by saying Sam and Joe are awesome. They're the best. There's no other two. Uh, hockey announcers for any of these other 31 teams that I would take over them. But I did kind of laugh at something that Joe said here. And he's not wrong when he says this, but he said at this point, because it was two nothing nights, and then Igor actually made one of his better saves of the night. And Joe said at this point, you know, uh, ma make sure to remember that one. You know, if the Rangers come back in this game, make sure to remember uh, that save by Igor Shesterk in there. And I'm thinking like, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to do that. Because th the reason I felt that way is because Igor had already allowed you know, two pretty soft goals before this. And it just didn't have the, the feel of a game. It goes back to what we talked about before. When Igor gets burnt a couple of times early, he's not slamming the door that you would like to see him do. And again, Joe's not wrong about this because if the Rangers do come back in this game and Igor locks it down and they come storming back and win like 4-2 or 5-2, then yes, this is a huge point in the game. But as he was saying that, and again, I understood why he said it, as he's saying that, I'm thinking like, there's no way anyone's going to remember this, this moment in the game because it, it just... This game doesn't have the feel of a game that the Rangers are going to come back and win, and this is going to be the spot that you look at and say, yep, that, that was the spot where they won the game. The only reason I remember it is because I wanted to make a note of it because I just didn't feel very good about the way this game was unfolding and the way the rest of the night was going to go uh, for the Rangers. So just wanted to throw that out there as well. Uh, as it turns out, that was indeed not a big turning point for the Rangers in this game. It was a nice save, but it didn't really lead to anything good uh, for the Rangers um, You know, from that point on because they didn't play any better the rest of the way. Uh, than they were playing at this point anyway. So, yep, that's kind of where it all went wrong in the first period. Uh, not good. I want to keep everything rolling just a second here. I got to, uh, you know, we talked, we called out Igor a little bit today. I, I got to call out the Rangers in general for kind of uh, deflating after the Knights' first goal, and specifically Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. I know they linked up for a goal in this game, but the Rangers just aren't getting enough uh, out of those two as things stand right now. So we'll get to all that good stuff in just a second, or not so good stuff, as it were. Uh, first, though, we definitely want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by our very good friends over at Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk just a minute about preparing for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That is scary. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to anybody. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use code OFFER. Locked on to get $20 off of your order. All right. So one of the, I mean, 
you got your pick of the litter here. As, as far as like the most disturbing thing that happened in this game, the most uh, disheartening thing, the most troubling thing going forward, you, you can point at a lot of different things. Because again, I do think this is up there with um, maybe the Rangers' worst performance of the season. And not just because of the final score, just the way everything went so south on them so fast and they just never recovered from it and nobody played well. Again, the list goes on and on. But one thing that really stood out to me is it felt like all it took for the Rangers to just completely and utterly deflate in this game was one goal by the Knights. Because again, 10 minutes into this game, maybe even 11 minutes into this game, Rangers were excellent. You could not have gotten off to a much better start uh, than the Rangers did. The only thing they didn't do was score, but they were creating plenty of scoring opportunities. You felt like the goals would eventually come. Uh, they were giving no opportunities to Vegas. Everything looked good. Um, but again, they gave up that one goal, and that was it. The Rangers never really rediscovered um, anything they were doing. They never got their mojo back from those first 10 minutes. Um, there was no real intensity from the Rangers in this game, just no competitive fire. Um, they just didn't seem focused kind of just going through the motions until somebody told them that the game was over. That's what it felt like watching the last 50 minutes of this game. And it's such a stark contrast to what we saw from this team at the start of the season, because there were games earlier this season, at the start of the year, where it, it kind of unfolded the way this one did, right? The first 10 minutes or so, the Rangers come out, they're playing great. They're creating all kinds of scoring chances. Uh, they're buzzing in the offensive zone, but the goals weren't there. And maybe even some of these cases, they actually fell behind by a goal. They fell behind one nothing. The Rangers, early in the season, did not panic in these situations. They did not start pressing. They did not uh, give up their defensive structure. They didn't start trying to, you know, create something out of nothing. There were no hope plays. Um, just better play overall, you know, good forechecking and, and all that good stuff. Um, but in this game, again, they, they completely collapsed after the first goal was scored. If this would have happened in October or November, they would have just shrugged it off. Obviously, you don't want to give up the goal. But okay, fine. We gave one up. We'll get it back. We're playing well. Let's just stick with it. Everything's going to work out. And in many, many cases, the Rangers, I don't know if this is still the case, but it was as recently as about a week ago. They, at that time, led the NHL and come from behind wins, which tells you that it's a high character team that knows that it's capable of coming back. I don't know if they're still at the top of the league in that stat, but they got to be close if they're not number one, because uh, that was only a week ago, like I said. But yeah, I mean, there, there was none of that here. It was the exact opposite. They, they were deflated. They were dead. Um, you, you watch this game, you know, no, nobody's hitting anybody. Rangers ended up with 22 hits, same as the Knights. So it's not like a like pitiful number or anything like that. But, I mean, how many of those hits really were impactful? You know, Will Cooley laid a good hit or two in this game. That was about it. And you just watch, and I don't want to be the body language doctor, but you watch these guys on the bench. Everybody's just kind of staring off in the space. Nobody's really chatting or anything. Um, nobody's really, you know, talking or it looked like they're really that into the game. Um, you watch Thompson and again, Thompson was great in this game. Take nothing away, made some fantastic saves, but did the Rangers, even in those first 10 minutes, did they really do anything to make him feel uncomfortable? Yeah. They got scoring chances in the first 10 minutes, but nobody was really in the crease in his face, um, screening, creating havoc, um, just doing anything to make him feel the least bit uncomfortable. Um, so there was that, uh, again, I, I thought they made it too easy on Thompson, even though Thompson was very good in this game. You know, the Rangers skating, it was okay, I guess, um, but just not not enough not enough fight there. There were no uh, post-whistle skirmishes, and I'm not saying you go out there and you look for trouble every single shift or you cheap shot somebody or anything like that, but I don't know, man, maybe just, like, stand over Thompson after a whistle or, like, if somebody gets a little too close to Igor, maybe give him a shove. Maybe, like, say something, you know, talk some smack before a face-off or something like that. Just something. Give me something that shows that you're alive and you're engaged and you're into this game. And there was basically none of that. And, you know, at the end of the game, that, that was the first time it happened because I was looking for it the entire night. And when the game ended, you had Schneider talking to somebody. I think it might have been Stevenson. You know, that they were kind of exchanging words. It's too late now. The game's over. Why even bother at this point? You know, it would have just been nice to see a little bit more of that. Uh, from anybody on the Rangers while this game was actually, you know, happening. Um, but got to talk about the Mika Zibanejad line as well, because they just were not good in this game. They were basically invisible uh, to go through the stat line. And, and these stat lines will actually make it sound a little bit better than I think they actually played. Uh, Mika was out there for 2136. He was a minus two, two hits, three shots on goal. Kreider was out there for 1949. He was a minus two, one hit, two shots on goal. Kaka was out there for 13.35. He was a minus one and had four shots on goal. And again, let's get this out of the way quickly. Yes, Mika Zibanej had scored a goal in this game on the power play. The primary assist did belong to Chris Kreider. Um, that made the score four to one at the very beginning of the third period on the power play. You know what? It's too little, it's too late, and it doesn't make up for the rest of the game where 
they just were basically ghosts out there. That this line was invisible when it came to five v five play. Uh, show me another besides the goal. Show me another, you know, good, real quality scoring chance that this line created the entire night. There was one in the third period. It was after the power play goal where there was a little bit of a scramble. You know, Kako had one or two decent shots at it, but for the most part, these guys just weren't making anything happen. And, and honestly, I'm not even going to include Kako in this. You know, I said the Mika line. Kako, it's only his third game back. Thought he looked good. Thought he played well the first two games back. Uh, this is on Mika and Kreider. You know, they, they both need to be a little bit better here. I'm calling them out the same way I called out Igor Shesterkin. Sooner or later, you know, we could talk about the fourth line and, oh, these guys suck and they'll never score. And we could talk about, like, the fifth or sixth defenseman and oh, they need to be back. You know what? The best players on the Rangers need to be the best players on the Rangers. That's where it all starts. Those are the guys that are supposed to be kind of driving the bus and leading the way. And they're just not right now. And there's just too many games where... Whoever's with uh, Mika and Kreider, Mika, Kreider, and whoever the third person is, the top line for the Rangers just does not look like an NHL top line. I mean, and what's so disheartening about this for me, too, is that it wasn't that long ago where this line went through a really nice stretch together. They, it felt like they were getting there. You know, it felt like they had finally figured it out. And I'm not just talking about the power play because a lot of people love to point to that. Yeah, they, they can only score on the power play. This line was really feeling it 5v5. Uh, there was a stretch of 10 games that went from December 20th uh, to December 30th or, you know, somewhere about there, the that stretch of time there. There's a 10-game stretch here where Mika Zibanejad in 10 games had eight goals and nine assists. Absolutely on fire. Only eight of those 17 points came on the power play, so he's getting it done 5v5 as well. Uh, Mika was a plus three in that time. And in those same 10 games, Kreider had four goals and seven assists. He was a plus six, and only two of his points occurred on the power play. So, uh, they were rolling. It felt like they were finally there. Okay, yeah, the, the, the bottom six, they're not going to score very often, but at least we've got two like top-notch lines making up our, our top six, and we're going to get rolling here, and the goals are going to come. But they've kind of faded ever since then. You know, the, the, the points aren't completely anemic, but there's just too many shifts that are nothing shifts. There's too many games that are kind of nothing games for this Ranger top line. And just like Igor Sesterkin, Mika Zibanejad, and Chris Kreider, uh, they both need to be better going forward. I, I don't think it's unfair to say that at this point. And I know I keep saying this, but especially now that we're past the halfway point of the season, you need your best players to be your best players. And something else that, that's going on right now, and Sam and Joe have been talking about it kind of off and on, but, you know, the Rangers, they're still in first in the Metro Division. That's what the awesome start that they had kind of bides for you because you can scuffle for a while and, and still remain in first place. But they got some teams breathing down their neck at this point. And, you know, kind of looking at the playoff picture, the team in ninth place in the Eastern Conference, and so the team that would be the first team out of the playoffs right now is the Caps. Uh, the Caps right now have 50 points. The Rangers have 58 points. That's all that's separating the Rangers from the first team out of the playoffs is eight points or four wins, you know, however you want to look at it. And the Caps actually have a game in hand on the Rangers, so it is time for this team to wake up and start winning some game games and uh, start banging some points again. Now, on the flip side of that, the Rangers, I just said, they have 58 points, right? Even after everything that's gone wrong here, even after all the struggles that they've had, even after the fact that they're basically a 500 team from December until now, uh, they still, there's only one team in the Eastern Conference with more points than the Rangers. That would be the Bruins. They have 63. And the Rangers and Panthers right now are tied with 58 points apiece. So, I mean, they're still in good shape. They're still in great shape. Um, they can get it back on track, you know, ho hopefully sooner rather than later here. I mentioned that, you know, the Caps are only eight points behind the Rangers, but you know, for the Rangers to fall out of the playoffs, because I see some people saying, oh my God, they're going to miss the playoffs. You would need seven teams to pass the Rangers. It'd be hard for that many teams to win that many games because for every game that one of those teams wins, you know, they're playing one of the other teams and they have to lose the game and they don't get any points. So, you know, I'm not worried about that or anything, but it's time to pick it back up. It's time for the Rangers to rejoin that tier, that top tier of NHL teams that it looked like they were at the start of the season. Cause right now they're not, they're just kind of, floating along, playing 500 hockey for basically about the last two months or so, or at least the last month and a half. So that's where things stand. The other thing that happened in this game that just is, I don't even know what to say about that anymore at this point. They, again, gave up a goal, made it 3 nothing in favor of the Knights, and then 25 seconds later, what do you think happened? If you didn't watch this game, just take a wild guess. What, what do you think happened in the shift that followed the Rangers giving up a goal? Yeah, of course, they gave up another one, and it's 4 nothing Knights. And I am at my wit's end with this. I have talked about this in the past. I've talked about how 
it'd be cool for you guys um, if you'd like, because I'd like to eventually do a segment on this in the future, but I've talked about it so much that I want you guys to kind of take the wheel for me. I want to hear from you and what you think about how the Rangers are performing in the shift that follows a goal. And I've already actually heard from a couple of you guys. A couple of you guys have sent me an audio file. So if you have any thoughts on that, record yourself for a minute, two minutes, whatever. Um, send it to me, email it to me. Give me your thoughts on why the Rangers are so bad in the shift that follows a goal, what they can do to correct it, um, what line you'd like to see out there on the shift that follows a goal, or just vent about it. Just tell me how mad you are about it. Because again, eventually I want to give the wheel to you guys uh, for an entire segment there. And you guys can just kind of uh, vent and try to come up with solutions to how this team can be better in the shift that follows a goal. Because right now uh, they suck in that area of their game. That's that's probably putting it mildly at this point. But anyway, I figure we could pretty much call it there. If you guys would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.